Here we go in a rematch of Super Bowl 48. The Seahawks and Broncos are underway. Block at the return. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. So first and 10 now from the 30. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And oh, his first carry, he loses the football. But this will on, fortunately baby. wind Let's up go. out of bounds. Can almost see inside his face mask there, the look <laughs> of relief. He coughed it up, but it goes out of bounds. They keep it. Someone carrying around the lucky horseshoe, aren't they? If I were him, I'd go out and play the lottery after that one. A very fortunate man. And they're operating in plus territory here. They're thinking points. Definitely don't want to lose the football at this juncture. You They'll run on first down. Carson, and this time he's able to take it down to the 42. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Blocked now to throw. He'll let this go for the end zone. And that is caught. But the back judge right there to say incomplete. I usually hesitate when I say a guy's got world-class speed, but this guy might. So let's fire the starter's pistol. Let's go. If you've got him, you've got to try and use him. A lot of anticipation with the ball in the air, but no, incomplete. Here's Locke to throw. That's complete to DK Metcalf. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. A big play that time on the catch and run. I don't think there's anyone who could possibly doubt how fast he could run in the open field. But if there were, he silenced those thoughts there. And that's the kind of play where you have to kind of catch your breath afterwards. So just give me a second here because... When he shifted into high gear, he was an absolute blur out there. No substitute for speed. We talk about that all the time. The evidence was right there. And his maximum speed there, according to the next-gen stats, 21.9 miles per hour. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. This is caught. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. On second and goal, lock. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawk touchdown. Dwayne Eskridge there to make the grab. And the Seahawks have taken a first quarter lead. Now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. And now before we get to the extra point, remember all touchdowns do have to be confirmed by the replay official. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Extra point up and through by Myers, and it's now a 7-0 game. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Hamler now to return it. Now a hit and a loose football, and the Seahawks have picked it up, and his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
On first and ten, here's Locke. That is taken in by the tight end fan. Touchdown! Yeah, like Noah Fan on the touchdown pass from Drew Locke. And the Seahawks are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. And what a weapon he is at the tight end spot because when they throw him the football downfield, they count on him getting additional yardage almost every time. And that's exactly what he did there. Caught that, ran with it, all the way to the end zone. Now Myers for the extra point. And it's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Hamler now to return it. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their 5'11 quarterback from Wisconsin by way of NC State, and that's Russell Wilson. They'll run. This is Melvin Gordon. And he powers his way up past the 30. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. They'll give it to Gordon out of the shotgun. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Sometimes I forget how much information he has to go through before the ball's even snapped. But what a diagnosis right there. Saw the play, shot through the gap like a rocket, ends up spilling it for a loss. On third down, Wilson. Steps away to his left. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. On fourth down, here's Sam Martin on to kick it away. Back deep, the former All-Pro Tyler Lockett. So a change of possession here on the punt. We see Drew Locke in the offense coming back on. He's showing off that arm, showing it off very well. They've got the lead. Don't forget, though, about the protection he's had. The protection's been good. And I'll guarantee you he hasn't forgotten about it at all because that's keeping him clean in the pocket, allowing him to step into throws and make those deep passes come true. I mean, it's just been beautiful for him to do. But guess what? In the huddle, on the sidelines, guaranteed he's thanking those big guys up. for keeping him safe. I have a feeling he made him by dinner. <laughs> Indeed, entertaining to relive some of those deep balls. Go. They'll start out on the ground with Carson. And a good stiff arm there before he's brought down on a nice little game. Partner, I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy, let him pick up the first down. On first down, it's Carson. And some room to maneuver. What a play. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Chris Carson, 56 yards. And the Seahawks find a way to stretch their lead. 
So there, Charles, I mean, a situation where it didn't matter how far he had to run, he was not going to be denied, and he winds up taking this all the way to the end zone. I think defensively, when you look at a play like that, that's when everyone looks at their teammates and starts shaking their heads a little bit because now you're wondering, what are we in for? Worked all week to try and limit the big playability that he possesses, and he winds up taking one to the house in the very first quarter. That was a tremendous run. Yeah, he covered a lot of ground on that one, as evidenced by the final total there on next-gen stats. So how about this for a start? 21-0 here in the first as they kick this one away. Hamler now to return it. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. They find themselves in a good size hole here, and a good size hole early on in this game as they come up on first down. And not a lot of daylight, not really any daylight inside as he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down. Twenty-one nothing. Our score after one. Here's second and ten. Running left, it's Gordon on the toss. Able to shake free for about seven up to the thirty-five. I know the toss play begins with the guy taking the snap and turning around and tossing it to the runner, but where the real intrigue is. Can they seal the edge, whether it's an offensive tackle or a tight end in the direction they want to run the football? If they do that, that's the result that you get, that type of a game. If they don't, oftentimes it's not a very successful play. Well, partner, none of these runs individually have added up to a whole lot. Now three plays, all three short runs, but together a first down. Yeah, it's amazing how the narrative changes when you string them together. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. Second and 11. Now they run from the gun with Gordon. And that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. Buying time to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. You and I both know most coaches are really fearful about their quarterbacks running with the ball. They don't want him to take that big hit. I don't think they worry about that with Russell Wilson. He's so smart in what he does, and we just saw it there on that scramble. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. But if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get him. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for them. Show them that you're supposed to get the football. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. This one complete to Jerry Judy. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. Seven yards to pick up there. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. We remind you that coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will be alongside. He'll have highlights and analysis from Orlando of this first half of action. And he stopped immediately there. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. Here's Wilson. He's got a man. It's Sutton that's complete. And he will have a Broncos first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. On first and ten, it's Wilson. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Well, you know you don't want to make a mistake in that area, so you make sure you make a smart throw. Throw it out towards the sidelines. If you overshoot your guy, so be it. It's just the incompletion that we saw there. On second and ten, Wilson. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Touchdown, Broncos. 
Albert O. 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Broncos cut into that lead. Extra point from McManus is good. And the lead will be cut down to 14. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And it'll be a touchback as Tyler Lockett says, I'm not going to return this one. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And now consider the lead. The question is, how much is good enough? Are you going for more? It's the NFL. There's never enough, I believe, because they get reeled in all the time when you sit on the ball. I think that they will try and move the ball downfield and try and squeeze a few more points out of this first half. They'll be careful. They'll be a little bit cautious at times, but also they will attack downfield and try and get position for at least three points. Well, partner, that's how you make a long drive suddenly not so long anymore. One big play, and they're already in field goal range with designs on getting more than that. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Lock now on first down. This caught by Fant toward the sideline. And he is out of bounds, but first he gets it inside the 10 to the 7. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. Well, he does have one touchdown in the game already, and while this one won't go for six, it's enough to get him first and goal. But you and I both know he's going to be a little upset he didn't cross the goal line for a second time in this one. Might want the ball here on the next play. The way he's been slinging in the first half, you expect everything he throws to go for a touchdown, but I guess he's got to wait to try and pick up that third, isn't he? Yeah, I thought he had him for a second, but you're right not to be. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. All right, Captain, it's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we've just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've kind of run out of your running plays. Fire another one into the end zone. Lock now on third and goal. They'll roll him out right. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. And that was a nice play. He knocked it away, but obviously you want the interception in this situation. You want to take away any chance and they have any decision to make on fourth down. But things happen so quickly in the end zone in this compressed. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Drew Locke as the first half is winding down. And the Seahawks would extend their lead here just before halftime. The defense was almost too good on that play. They took away all of his targets. The one thing they forgot to account for him as a runner. And he's able to tuck it and go for the end zone and get it done. The extra point now coming from Myers. He knocks it through. It's 28-7. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And in the end, it's capped off by a seven-yard run. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Oh, trying to gauge the sun, and he muffs it. Now a hit and a loose football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And they have the football and will take over at the 24-yard line. So problems compounding themselves here on the return. They just give up the touchdown, and now they lose the football. Yeah, partner, things are starting to unravel a little bit for them right in front of our eyes. They're going to be looking for some answers, and quickly. Throwing on first down is Locke. Flush to his right. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. 
Locke working out of the gun. And this will be caught by Metcalf for a Seahawk touchdown. Let's go. DK Metcalf in the final seconds of the first half. And the Seahawks are able to widen their lead here in this first half. And that's a lead that excites a team as they head into the half. Good way to finish things off. Yeah, able to extend that lead, and you always say it, that can totally change the complexion of half number two. Yeah, it changes your morale, changes your outlook. But even before that, let's see if they decide to kind of squib kick or what they're going to do on the kickoff because you don't want to give up a big play right before the half ends. Good point. Myers connects on the PAT, and the route is on here in this first half. So with three seconds remaining in the half, they will line up to kick this one away. A fairly short kick from the 14. So we've come to halftime after a very one. And okay, so much for our halftime break. Apparently we're going to get right back to it. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. As they say here in London, all to play for as we are back underway in the second half. Taken at the 15, a short kick. And pretty good field position here. He's out of bounds right at the 35. The Broncos onto the field ready to start their next drive. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two-minute. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Now Wilson. That one's complete to Tomlinson. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of it. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawks defense. Jordan Brooks in there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. It's been a tough one all game long for this offensive line. They're already down big, and now you know they're just going to come after the quarterback in a big way, don't you? Yeah, they, they just can't get out of their own way right now. It's created an avalanche, and an avalanche is coming right on top of them. Here's Sam Martin now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. DK Metcalf of the Seattle offense about set to take over once again. Good day for him so far here in the third quarter. He's hit pay dirt once, over 100 yards, but hey, it's the third quarter. He's thinking, I want more, right? He wants more, and it just increases the confidence of his team because every play he makes, that means his quarterback is really feeling good about throwing the football. Probably feels like he can't throw an incomplete pass when he throws it to him right now. Yeah, he's looked really, really sharp. On third down, Carson. 
And he's going to be stopped short of a first down as they'll get to him at about the 33. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. And how about the call here? They need two yards in their own territory on fourth down, and they're going to go for it. That's to the tight end, Colby Parkinson. The 20! And all the way in, touchdown Seattle! Colby Parkinson, 67 yards! And the Seahawks are running away with this one. Well, for a tight end, he can definitely motor, and he shows off the wheels there after the catch as he's able to shake free. Yeah, normally when you talk about tight ends, you immediately begin talking about them rumbling down the field, but to me, he was pretty well gliding downfield there. Very athletic for a big man, and he takes this one all the way to pay dirt. Extra point up and through by Myers, and the lead will swell by one more. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Taken at the 15, a short kick. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get Let's it up go. past the 30. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now, really anything to cling on to. This offense has struggled. Partner, join me in a walk to their locker room at the half, okay? Because I think what we would have seen is an offensive coordinator and his, and his assistant coaches getting together with all their positions, then coming together as a group, going over adjustments, and then the head coach coming in and just screaming, <laughs> wake. He's got a man complete. And he's taken down inside the red zone, past the Seattle 15. A huge play there for Denver. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Now the handoff comes to Gordon. And able to get him inside the five here, just inside the five to about the four. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. They keep it on the ground again, Gordon. And he will push his way forward down to about the three yard line. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. That's it, baby. Month 56. There's Wilson to throw. Uh, he's got it. Touchdown. Cortland do Sutton from three yards out. And the Broncos get one score closer. McManus's point after is good, and that'll cut the lead down a bit to 28. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. That's right, baby. Well, from deep in the end zone, he's going to bring this out. Seattle again getting ready to take over offensively. Still comfortably on top, third quarter as they start things here with a first and ten. Here's Locke. Going for Metcalf on the deep ball. And that's caught inside the 35. And he gets all the way down to the 30-yard line. It's a big play there for Seattle. We have seen big plays from both quarterbacks throughout this game, and there's another one right there going back and forth. Almost like two excellent guitar soloists trying to top each other with each additional play. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. On first down, Locke rolling to his right. Catch is made by Metcalf. And he will reach the five-yard line before going out of bounds. Partner, I have to tell you, just one word keeps coming to mind from watching them this afternoon, and that's impressive. They have been impressive from the opening kickoff 
and they haven't let up here even into the fourth quarter. Lock going to throw. Touchdown, Seahawks. Noah failed on the touchdown pass from Drew Locke. And the Seahawks offense continues to pour it on. I'm not sure what other ground there is to cover here. I mean, this offense has been amazing. Just total domination, Charles. They've clicked so well. And if you really focus in on the offensive line, They've protected well when they wanted to throw the ball. They've moved people off the line of scrimmage when they wanted to run it. Smiles all the way around. This offense has been really good in this one. <laughs> I think this is just going to be a function of the times we live in now. Very similar to the bat flip in baseball. Everyone's got to start to get comfortable with this. But to me, this is just rubbing it in. You got a big lead. Go ahead and take the extra point. One thing to keep in mind, though, karma's still out there and sometimes has a way of catching up with you. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Hamler now to return it. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. I love it. We'll see if they dial it up this drive. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. From the gun, it's Wilson. And oh, that nearly their first pick of the game, but it falls down to the ground incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Throwing again here, Wilson. Again, he targets Judy and this time the catch made. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Throwing is Wilson. He'll find Sutton on the right side complete. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. He'll get that complete to Albert O. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Looking to throw again on second down. Wilson flushed out right. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the Let's first go. down. Let's go. Sometimes guys get locked into such a groove. What do we call it? The game slowing down. They see everything happening almost in slow motion. They see the lanes develop. I feel like he's right there. Well, and you want this from your leader, right? With this deficit, this stage of the game, second half, no quit in him. Zero. Now a quick slant as the throw's complete. And he's across for the touchdown. Too little, too late. But he does get in for six. No wonder you're grinning. You just beat me in our fantasy league. Indeed I did, my good man. Extra point from McManus is good as they make the score just a slight bit more respectable here in the final quarter of play. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Block it, the return. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. We've got a lopsided game here. I don't know, Charles, what does the handbook say that we, we discuss when we've got a game like this in the fourth quarter? Oh, a contested ball here, and it's going to be caught. 
It's a big play there for Seattle. For Drew Locke coming out of Missouri, the one thing that scouts they loved was his arm strength, and we see why there. And he made that look effortless, didn't he? I mean, he's had a great game throwing the football, and this is going to add to his yardage total in a big way. It's one thing to be accurate on your short and intermediate throws, but when you're hitting the bombs like those, look out. Lock now on first down. He'll buy some time right. And give him another six. It's caught for a touchdown, and the blowout continues. Well, they mentioned this week, Charles, they had a couple kinks on offense that they wanted to fix. I would say they're pretty well fixed. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. I mean, just about everything they've run has been successful in this one. And if I'm the defensive coordinator, I'm done with this, right? I have no answers for anything. In fact, I'd probably send a note to the clock operator. Let it run. Myers connects on the PAT, and that will extend this big lead. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Hamler now to return it. Now a hit and a loose football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. Oftentimes when we talk about piling on in any subject, it's a negative. In this case, for this team, it's a real positive. Just scored. Now they go down, knock the ball free, get it back. They got a chance to really increase their lead and put themselves in the driver's seat. On the other side, a little insult added to the injury. They're in a bad spot. A lot going to throw it here, sliding out of the pocket. This is caught, and he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. Well, where our booth is here, we can see all of the writers to our left, and their post game score. They have been filed for some time because this game, boy, is it lopsided. Yeah, we can see our guy scoop. He's even got his fedora tipped over his face. I think he's taking a nap now. Nothing left to write for him, but how gratifying has it been for them to see what they've done in practice and carry it into a game and see the execution be so good. They've got to feel fantastic about what they've accomplished in this one. And not willing to risk another fumble. On, He'll sit on go. this one. It's a touchback. And the football going back over to the Denver Broncos. They are just obviously getting shellacked here in this one, Charles. What's, what's the message if you're a coach for this final drive in a lopsided game like this? For a lot of coaches, be honest. Don't forget today. <laughs> Don't forget what has happened out here. Yeah, use that as ammo exactly. going forward. Exactly. Take a great look at that scoreboard. Realize how poorly everything went for us today. Coaching, playing, the whole deal. And never forget it because... You're not going to want that feeling oh, No, you don't want that feeling again. And who knows? You may meet up with this team again. To throw again on second down. Wilson. That's complete. Okue Bunam. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. Wilson will throw again. Got a man. It's Judy complete. And he will have a Broncos first down. And he's going to have it by plenty. Able to get eight yards there on third and two. Now Wilson on first down. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked out and incomplete. Now defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game, and that was a big talk both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them holding them under 200 today. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. From the shotgun, Wilson. He'll go up top here for Hamler. That's caught inside the 20. 
And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. It's a big play there for the Broncos. Oh, wait, hold everything. A timeout has been called. Seemingly silly with one second remaining in this game. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. One last shot for Wilson. And it's caught. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. A big offensive explosion help leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow.